Thank you and good morning, everyone. And I'm very excited to share some of our impacts using our um, civic tech tool, Budeshi. So I'm just going to go right into it. Um, I'm going to be speaking on our journey, some of our impacts in communities in Nigeria, um, our next steps, and a little bit about what PPDC does. So Budeshi is um, a civic tech tool that links um, procurement data to various service um, um, service, public services using um, the OCDS. So what we did was figure out what the challenges were and try to address those challenges and bridge the gaps. So the first thing we saw was open governance. We saw that the Nigerian government, for obvious reasons, were very rigid and you know very closed with procurement data. They were not you know opening up their books to show us the contract details, the contractors, and things like that. So we saw this was a big challenge because this is um, um, or, um, procurement governance accounts for over 70% of corruption cases in Nigeria. So it was very important for us to you know, bridge this gap and find a solution to opening the government. The second challenge was the paucity of procurement data. We also found that when you request for data from the government, they give you a huge stack of PDF documents that you know, someone who is not a data person and cannot clean data wouldn't be able to use the data, wouldn't be able to clean it and effectively use it for what they are trying to do. So we also try to find a way to simplify the data. And the last um, challenge was data access to citizens. Of course, with government not opening up their books, it was very hard for citizens to actually um, access data and use it to track government expenditures. So with that, Budeshi, the Budeshi initiative was born. It was born in our office in Abuja with about, let's say five, six people literally cleaning data on a PDF and opening it up to the public. And later on in the year, we got funding from various um, international organizations and we developed our Budeshi tool, which is here, the Open Contracting for Nigeria. Another key feature of our Budeshi tool is we have a Budeshi hub that allows um, journalists, civil society organization, community members to track um, procurement um, contracts or procurement um, proceedings in various communities and report it on our portal, giving access to a variety of audiences, both people who just want to know what's up in their communities or people who actually want to conduct investigative journalism. And as of today, Budeshi has over 10,000 data sets in digital formats. So I'm going to be talking about some of the enabling factors um, for Budeshi's success. The first was the Public Procurement Act, which is basically an act that mandates or, yes, mandates um, public procurement processes to be open, fair, and competitive. And with the public procurement, with the enactment of the Public Procurement Act, the Bureau for Public Procurement was also um, birthed. This is an agency that mandates MDAs, ministry departments, and agencies to follow the principles and the guidelines that the Act provides. Another enabling factor is the launch of the Open Government Partnership, which I think we're all very familiar with. Then, of course, the Freedom of Information Act, which was a great act that enabled citizens, gave us the rights to actively ask and demand for public information from the government. Then Nigeria signed up to the OGP in 2016, and PPDC was a huge um, factor to that, we were able to raise awareness and push the government to actually ascend their signature um, on the contract to sign up Nigeria to the OGP. Then the CEFTAS program, which was an initiative by the World Bank, um, giving funding to state government to proactively disclose information. And what we did in this initiative was we provided free technical capacities to about five states in Nigeria, we help them build their portals, their open um, OCDS compliant portals where every state's procurement information was um, made easily accessible to the citizens. And of course, the beneficial ownership um, initiative by the OGP as well, which um, what this does is mandate businesses, especially in the extractive industry to disclose the ownership of their companies to help curb corruption in that sector. 
So this is our Budeshi roadmap. So I've already spoken about um, the six of us in an office in Abuja, cleaning data in an Excel sheet and making it accessible to government, sorry, citizens. Um, our Budeshi Wakato. So we saw that it was important to not only bridge the gap at the federal level of government, but also to kind of step down the initiative to the state and local level. So what we did was begin a tour around different states and local communities in Nigeria. And what we found out is the, should I say, the oblivious nature of you know, community members with public procurement contracts. We saw that they thought that um, contracts in their communities were a favor from the government. And we made them understand that it's their rights and it's because of the taxes that they are paying that you know, these projects are being erupted in their community. Um, our Budeshi Wakato also um, gave us an opportunity to see or step down our initiative into localizing um, the initiative and meeting the local communities at their level. It's one thing to have this great portal and great platform that the journalists who are um, tech savvy can use, but it's another thing to actually make it accessible to local um, citizens. So what we did was create a toll-free number that allowed them to call us free of charge and ask us for procurement data. Budeshi also won um, the award for um, procurement innovative um, um, platform back in 20, 2015, 2014, I'm, I can't remember. But that was a huge um, part on our back and you know, motivation to push forward in our, in our, our engagement. And another thing that we did was our investigative journalist training. So it was important that we, we enhance data-driven journalism using our data set from Budeshi. And I recall one of our journalists who um, conducted an investigation of a contract. And the contract wasn't done. And the contractor bribed or tried to bribe the journalist with about $2,000 to drop the story. And these kind of things make me realize that when people say Nigeria is a poor country, um, we're not really poor. <laughs> And, you know, just a few days ago, the vice president's villa was um, unveiled and commissioned for about over one billion naira, which is approximately roughly $600,000. And that is just for somebody's house, the VP's house, when, you know, there are dilapidated health facilities and schools littered across Nigeria. So that was one interesting thing that we saw from our investigative um, journalist trainings that we conducted. And of course, the Open Government Partnership and the Beneficial Ownership um, Initiative as well. So some of our impacts, human capital development. So Budeshi has seen direct impacts in communities. And I will speak more about this in my subsequent slides. We have also experienced expansion of the Budeshi Initiative in various communities. Um, with. So what we do is each community we visit, we try to create a community of practice and we call them our community-based monitors. So what they do is use data sets from Budeshi to monitor and track public procurement um, projects in their various communities. So what, we, what we've done with that is let them run with that. So they keep monitoring, keep training. So it's almost like a train the trainer kind of um, initiative. So they train other people to use the data sets, track, monitor, raise awareness, investigate, just so that service delivery can be met and improved. Our freedom of information ranking has also been one of our pivotal um, impacts or experiences during our whole journey in Budeshi. What we do is send out FOI um, requests to different MDAs in Nigeria, asking them for procurement related data. And we have done this for over five years and we have been able to collaborate with other CS organizations in Nigeria to make it bigger. And we have seen an improved um, disclosure practice level among the MDAs, though um, that data kind of dropped last year and in 2022, but we're hoping that this year, you know, we get to see more improvements. And in this initiative, we have also been able to provide free legal and um, free trainings to MDAs for their FOI decks. So what the FOI Act mandates MDAs to do is not only proactively disclose information, but to have a dedicated FOI DEX office in their 
organizations. So when citizens request for data, somebody is there to attend to it. And it was very interesting for us to see that though the law mandates them to have this, they didn't have it. So it was up to us to provide them those free legal, the free legal, um, sorry, not free legal, the free trainings for their FOI um, decks. Um, citizens' engagement is another big impact of our Bideshi journey. With the availability of data, we have seen that citizens are now bolder to ask government questions. And a case study is the open letter by Fon Shodor Tui, um, where he was asking the Lagos state government about some discrepancies in some procurement activities. And it just spurred up some conversations. And you know, the Lagos state government responded to that and um, engagement started on that project. And finally, um, Budeshi's expansion across Africa. So seeing the impact that we've had in Nigeria, it was um, important that we also expand to other African countries. So we've expanded to Malawi, Uganda, and Kenya, basically rep um, replicating our methodologies and seeing how that will work for them. So these are the case studies that I said I will speak about. Um, this is a primary health care center in Delta State, Nigeria. Um, if you can see the state of this primary health care center. So when we went to this community, we spoke to the community members to ask them, you know, what are some of their challenges? And it's very interesting to see that community members do not have access to their representatives. These people stay in office for four years, do not speak or come down to the places they're supposed to be, or the speak to people they're supposed to be representing. They just stay in office, collect money for projects, and go. In the next, next term, when the election comes around, they come distribute money, bags of rice, or bags of food stuff, and you know, get re-elected again. So when we asked the community members what they needed the most in this community, they mentioned this primary health care center, which had been left dilapidated for over a decade, if not two decades. And I remember a story of a young lady who lost her baby because she was unable to get to this facility. She got to this facility, but there was no, um, the medical equipment were poor. So before she could get to the next facility, the baby had died. So that was a very touching thing for us. So of course, we began to write FY letters to the reps, began our advocacy online, using radio, using TV, using press using social media as well. And as you can see, the project was, construction started, and now the project is complete. So the people in this community have access to primary, a primary healthcare center. The next case study is, which is also a very interesting one to me because Buzunkuri is a community located approximately about 20, if not less, kilometers from Abuja, which is a federal capital territory. And it's interesting to see that they, didn't, they don't have water, access to portable water. They literally have to go, I'm even embarrassed to say this, they have to go to the stream in 2023 to get water, to, um, to bathe for household activities and you know, for cooking and things like that. So of course, when we heard this, we began to write letters to their representatives. We also taught them how to write letters to their representatives. And we made sure that in each of our engagements, we kept on pushing them. You know, when we come back to speak with them, they would tell us that, oh, they were in the office of the rep for so many hours, nobody attended to them. But we had to tell them that they had to keep on persevering and, you know, be optimistic and keep on going, that they had to push. And thankfully, they now have a new borehole, so they don't have to go far, you know, to get those, to get water. And this is another case study of a classroom block in Ekiti State. So our next steps is to forge partnerships. It's very important for us to forge partnership with other CSOs who are doing similar work in our field and also share our learnings, get feedback from them and also adapt you know, what has worked in their communities as well. We're also going to scale up Budeshi. You know, in a trending, in a constantly evolving world and society, it's important to meet the needs of our audiences and people that we're trying to serve and reach. So we're going to scale up our Budeshi. And of course, continuous advocacy to states to open, to adopt the open contracting data standards. So we have about six states now, Ekiti, Kaduna, Abia, um, Adamawa, who are currently operating the OCDS data standards. Though the data on those portals are as good as nothing, but it's something. 
<laughs> so we're going to continue advocating for you know more states to adopt this. And finally, what is PPDC about? So PPDC is um, a CSO organization in Abuja, basically created to improve citizens' participation in governance and to hold government accountable. It's just for us to um, equip citizens with the right capacity to make sure government is being accountable for its um, expenditure and are being transparent enough in the process. So some of our program areas are procurement governance, which is what I have just been talking about. We have our digital governance, which focuses on safer internet, data protection, data privacy. We have our behavioral change communication, which focuses on how our communication is changing the behaviors through some of our initiatives, like our voice box, our home video um, program, which is about using film and creative arts to, um, to tell stories and raise um, awareness on social issues. And our access to justice program, which is about reforming the justice sector in Nigeria by improving court processes and reducing pretrial detainees in Nigeria. Thank you.